YouTube vinyl community, Beach Boys fans, random people on the internet, my name is Giggins, and we are here today to talk about the Beach Boys 1995 Greatest Hits album, 20 Greatest Hits, 20 Good Vibrations, The Greatest Hits, on cassette. Because in the 90s, this is what we listened to, cassettes. So, um, as you know by watching this channel, I talk about the Beach Boys a lot. They're one of my favorite bands. And in the course of doing so, I'm literally going to cover every single release that's ever been put out by the Beach Boys. So, <laughs> uh, maybe some of them are going to be super redundant, some of them might be kind of pointless, but uh, I will find a point and a non-redundant way to express how much I think each and every one of these things are super cool. So, um, in this case, yes, another Greatest Hits album, but um, a really special one for me anyway. When I was a kid, I got this album. Um, this was not my introduction to them. I, my introduction to them was actually Endless Summer on cassette. It was my mom's cassette, and that was uh, how I got into them. But this came out like a year or two after I was getting into the Beach Boys. And that tape was old and getting really played out and uh, starting to get worn out. And so we were still part of the Columbia House. Remember that? Remember Columbia House? Uh, thing where we can get like, you know, a thousand CDs for a penny each or whatever it was. And um, so I got this one brand new when it first came out and I loved it. And I really liked that Kokomo was on it because when I was a kid, I used to watch the video of the Muppets doing Kokomo. Uh, on TV, I think it was on Nickelodeon or something. So I'm a product of the late 80s, early 90s Beach Boys era. And with that, we're going to talk about the late 80s, early 90s Beach Boys era. So get ready for ponytails and cargo shorts because we're going back in time to ABC Family TV nights. Um, during this time, America's band was definitely in their 50s and really starting to show their dad rock appeal. Um, the creative force that once was Smile and Sunflower and Holland, long gone. Forget all that. We've got cool cheerleaders. We've got beach balls. We've got confetti. We've got fun in the sun, surf and turf. Here's Barbara Ann. Here's the Tanner family getting pushed out on stage, singing it with them. This is 90s. Um, and so this was an interesting time to be a Beach Boys fan. Growing up um, with their music and... And particularly the hits. That's really what I knew as a kid was the Endless Summer album and this. Um, we had a few other other albums, but I was mostly into this stuff because it was fun. It reminded me of summer. It reminded me of going to the pool. It was just a great, um, a great way to get into a, an amazing group. I, I will never dog these songs because to me they are part of my DNA. They're not something I listen to all the time, but I really, really love them. Um, and what I liked about this tape a lot was that it spanned a little bit more than what the Endless Summer tape had. Because that one's basically 62 to 65. Uh, and then in the late 80s, they added good vibrations onto the end of it. So that was a reissue. This one is cool because you got like the early stuff, but then you got some stuff from Pet Sounds on here. And then you got um, Kokomo. And that's the whole tape. So <laughs> All right, so it's part Endless Summer, part Pet Sounds, part Kokomo. That's, that's what you get. So basically, the reason why I wanted to talk about this was because I want to say it was released for a number of reasons. One, every decade or so, another Beach Boys greatest hits seems to come out. In the, seven, in the 60s, you had Best of the Beach Boys, Volumes 1, 2, and 3. In the 70s, you had Endless Summer, Spirit of America, and Sunshine Dream. And then in the mid-80s, you had... Uh, made in the USA, which is a really good set, and then this in the mid-90s, which eventually became a three-volume set, and then eventually we got Sounds of Summer, and then The Warmth of the Sun, um, so who knows what might come out next, but, so, maybe it was just due for another greatest hit sound for the Beach Boys, or it could have been for the fact that in the early 90s, between the always lost Suti band that they were, um, Mike sued Brian for uh, royalties and, and uh, getting his name on the songs the show that he also co-wrote a bunch of them like California Girls and a ton of other ones um, to which he sued Brian and or Brian's management or however you want to put it um, and won and so 35 songs got amended to say Mike Love, Brian Wilson or Brian Wilson, Mike Love um, and Brian lost like 5 million bucks in that deal but they got it taken care of it was all settled 
So part of me thinks maybe this was released to get Mike some more royalties. So basically, you know, a lot of these songs are Mike's songs, um, like California Girls and uh, I think he got credit on I Get Around. I, uh, I could be wrong, I'm shaky on that, but basically a lot of the songs that he got mended are on this album. So maybe it was like, hey, let's put out another Greatest Hits album so Mike can get a paycheck. Part two of me thinks that the Good Vibrations box set that came out in the mid-90s was also a giant smash. And so maybe to capitalize on that, Capital was like, well, let's just put out a single album of Greatest Hits. It's been a while. Um, that might sell. They were right. Um, this thing has gone platinum twice. I think double platinum. Yeah, two times platinum. Um, later on. This tape also has a couple of different like versions of it. In, the, in 1995, this version came out, which is the one that I have with the, the, white, the white back and the clear shell tape. It was reissued again in 1999 as um, 20 Good Vibrations Volume 1, and then there was Volume 2 and Volume 3 that followed shortly right after. Volume 1 and 2 were released on the same day in 1999, and those were to coincide with that Beach Boys movie that John Stamos did. Oh, you didn't see it? That's okay. Guess what? You missed nothing. So, <laughs> yeah, it's really not good. Um, I have a feeling that's why those were released at that time, probably to promote the movie and then, you know, have a little bit of back and forth there, but... Um, so the, again, in the mid nineties, the Beach Boys were also slowly getting back together with Brian as a creative working unit. Um, you know, after Landy got taken out of the picture, Brian was basically a free agent and he was writing a ton of stuff with Andy Paley who had helped him out with the first solo album, but then Sweet, um, Sweet Imagination, um, Sweet Insanity, Sweet Insanity, I can't talk today, you guys, and, um, so they wrote, like, they collaborated for years. Throughout most of the 90s, they collaborated, and then into the 2000s as well. But um, their peak was in the 90s. And so by 1995, you know, after after the lawsuits had settled and everything else was cool, Mike and Brian did actually get back together and write a couple of songs, but Brian felt like he was on the spot. And he couldn't come up with stuff, and he just felt like the timing was wrong. But the stuff he was making with Andy Paley, he had it earmarked for the Beach Boys to say, hey, you know, what we're doing right now, I think, would be great for the guys. And so, sure enough, they came to the studio, they did some tracks, they did three that we know of that were, like, completed. Completed. Um, two of those showed up on the Made in California box set, You're Still a Mystery, and um, Soul Searching. Both amazing songs. They're just absolutely fantastic songs. Classic Brian. Um, the vocals on them are so good. Um... Carl doing Soul Searching was fantastic, but apparently it just, I guess the guys weren't feeling it or something. I mean, they did Dance in the Night Away, and Carl walked out, and I guess they couldn't get Mike to sing some of the songs because he wanted to change the, the lyrics to a bunch of stuff. The whole thing turned into like a, maybe, I don't know, lack of a better term, maybe an ego trip, or maybe just like trying to get the band to be the band, and you know, Mike having just won his lawsuit maybe wanted to be like, hey, I can still write songs talk to me um but brian was adamant he was like you know what these are the songs these are the way i wrote them this is what we need to do um i really think this is what we should do and it just it fell apart and then eventually joe thomas got involved and the stars and stripes album happened which was a total stinker and that was it that was the those were the last sessions with carl um and then in the late 90s they just splintered apart after carl died the band just broke up al left david marks came back um but throughout this time, they were on top of the world media-wise. I mean, they will always be remembered for being on Home Improvement and Full House and Baywatch. Can't wait for a summer in love. Hey now, it's a love thing. By the way, when you watch that Baywatch clip, in the beginning when they're doing Summer of Love, um, all of the guys are there. Bruce, Brian, Carl, um, Mike, Al, they're all there. And, you know, uh, Brian's just kind of sitting there like, clapping his hands. I think he might have a bass on him. Um, but they're doing that song. And then, like, throughout the episode, the Beach Boys come back on stage. And there's no Carl. There's no Brian. But there's Mike, Bruce, and David Marks appears out of nowhere. Like, complete. Poof, it's 1963 all over again. Here's David Marks um, doing the opening riff to Fun, Fun, Fun. And it's like, well, holy crap. Like, David Marks is in the band. Um... Maybe he was just filling in for Carl. I mean, I know Mike was always a big proponent for David to get him back in the band throughout multiple points in the band's career, especially in the late 60s, early 70s. But 
that came out of nowhere. Like I remember watching that clip for the first time, being like, uh, "Okay, Carl's gone and Dave's here. Sweet." So, uh, yeah, check that out. But then you'll see the clips of them on Home Improvement, where they're hanging over the fence with Wilson, and you know, apparently Wilson's related to guess what? The Wilsons. Um, <laughs> his buddies, the Beach Boys, just happened to stop by and. Tim the Toolman Taylor does his classic, oh, you guys should play a little GTO or a little old lady from Pasadena. And then they pass it off to the the jokes from there. But, uh, yeah, they call it the ponytail era. And really, I think only and Matt and Al, Matt Jardine and Al's kid, uh, I think only they had ponytails at that point. But they were all definitely wearing the shorts and the Hawaiian shirts concept. Um, they were definitely dad rocking it up at that point. But, hey, I mean... People were coming to their shows expecting to hear those songs. You can't knock them. They were just doing what they were doing. Um, anyways, back to this album. <laughs> now that I've explained the 90s Beach Boys to you. Um, so this came out in April of 95. And again, it was reissued in 1999. Um, as far as I can tell for charting for this thing, it must have charted at some point in 1995. I can't find those specs anywhere. But when it did chart in 1999... Um, I think it was on the charts for like hit number 22 in July of 1999. It spent 18 weeks on the chart. Um, so did really well for itself there. Went double platinum. Um, this album is mostly stereo. The 1999 version is mostly mono. So there you go. Um, Help Me Rhonda and Be True to Your School are the album versions on this one. On the 1999 reissue, they are the single versions. So that's pretty cool. But um, this was issued on tape and CD in 1995, and tape and CD again in 99. Um, on the 1999 reissue, it also adds volume one to the bottom of the cover. I don't have that reissue. I'm still still trying to dig that one up. But um, some of the credits on this thing are a little bit messed up, like um, on Surf and Safari and 409. It actually lists Murray Wilson and not Nick Vinette, or Nick Vinay, however you pronounce his last name, as the producer, which I thought was interesting. Um... It also changed the set list up a little bit on the 1999 reissue. So this one ends with um, God on the Nose, Catch a Wave, and Kokomo. On the other one, I think it's like Good Vibrations and Kokomo or something like that. They, um, track two, side two is a little bit different. Um, yeah. But I, um, I have a feeling Kokomo was added on here just because it was a number one hit. And it was a fairly recent song at this point. It was only like six years old or seven years old when this, when this album came out. So it was the first time it was on like a greatest hits album for the Beach Boys. And, um, you know, they really try to do, I mean, this is a really incredible set. I mean, you've got some great stuff on here. You've got Surfing USA, Fun, 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 I Get Around, Shut Down, Help Me Rhonda, Sleep John B, Wouldn't It Be Nice, Good Vibrations, Kokomo. So they really went for like the biggest songs they had. Um, Catch a Wave is an interesting track to throw on here. They probably, they probably could have put something else on there in place of that. I like Catch a Wave a lot, but I, I, I've never seen that as one of their biggest hits. Um, that's just me. But, so that's probably why Kokomo was on here. Fairly new song at that point. Um, and the thing is, like, if they had... When this came out, there were no plans of being a three-volume set. But, you know, if they had done that originally, putting Kokomo on the third set, no one would have bought that third set just for one song. You know, because no one remembers all this stuff from the 70s and early 80s. Let's face it, guys. We do, but you ask somebody if they like Get You Back and they've never heard that song before. So, it just wouldn't have been a thing. So, but volume three of this series is really good. Um, but yeah, they put it on this album basically to make it sell. It was a big song. It was catchy. I loved it when I was a kid. So, um, that's kind of it. There's really not much else to say about this thing beyond the fact that it exists and it's really not bad. And, um, you know, this is the actual tape I had when I was a kid, so it's still... I was playing it the other day. I mean, it's got Dolby B, Dolby NR, HX Pro. It sounds fantastic. I mean, it's a really good-sounding tape. Um, and the inside booklet I've opened up very gingerly over the years because it's starting to fall apart on me. Um, I vividly remember looking at this chart of all the, a bunch of their albums and... Uh, because this is right after the box set came out. So there's some more some more pictures and it folds out some more. And they have like all the dates and stuff on the inside of uh, the tracks. And, you know, some good pictures of the guys. But it's a really nicely packaged set. I gotta admit, I mean, it's really nice. Um, in terms of a single album 
greatest hits from the guys. I always thought this was cool. Like it shows um, the Friends album, and like each album says like you know featuring you know one whatever song, and this one says Friends featuring when a man loves a woman. Not even like the title track or something. I thought that was a very weird choice. Um, and it's Surf and Safari featuring Ten Little Indians. Not even Surf and Safari. <laughs> okay, so pretty cool. But yeah, this album definitely for me, it's it's nostalgia. It takes me back to being a kid and and seeing the guys on those shows, Home Improvement and all that stuff. Um, I wasn't watching Baywatch when I was a kid, but I, I remember hearing about it. Um, it wasn't until YouTube came out that I got to see that clip, but. That's it. Uh, I really just wanted to talk about this thing. Here's the side of it. I love the side with the orange on it. I think that's really cool. Packaging, I think it's a great cover. It's just a fun cover. It looks like the 60s. I mean, it's a fun cover. There's a random tire falling around. There's, there's an orange hanging out in the ocean. Um, I like the logo they picked. They didn't go with the standard 70s Beach Boys logo. I like they, they did something different with that surfboard look. I think that's pretty cool. So, yeah. Uh, 10 out of 10, obviously, because it's, like, really good songs, you guys. Like, really good songs. Um, but, yeah, also just nostalgia factor for me. But uh, I thought it would be fun to talk about this and talk about the 90s Beach Boys era. Um, we can go way down the rabbit hole some more on this stuff. And I will in the future with some other videos. Um, particularly when I do talk about Stars and Stripes, we'll go into much more detail. But until that time, my name is Giggins. Thank you so much for watching. Um, and that's it. The Beach Boys. 20 good 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 vibrations coming at you um yeah 10 out of 10 my name is Giggins thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video bye bye